Hello, today we're going to go over integration with GoToBilling. So if you've set up GoToBilling, you're familiar with the features within their website, uh, how to create recurring charges, how to log in, view a customer's account. But what I want to explain is how GoToBilling interacts with the Imagine Time desktop or cloud program. So the very first thing you need to do is you go to the Setup Utilities ribbon, you choose Company Setup, that opens this screen, you enter in your GoToBilling login account. That's the same account that you would enter here if you were going to sign in. Then you enter in your Gateway PIN code. That's going to be provided to you along with a security password that prevents your users of the Imagine Time program from seeing your PIN code or gateway account number. You don't want users to have access to that information in your office. Staff should not have that. Otherwise, they can go into go, and bill, go to billing and uh, have access to the account and be able to actually affect transactions on a customer. So you don't want to protect that information by entering a security password here. The next thing you want to do is display and uh, set up a message here. If you want to send statements or invoices out by email, then have a link for a customer to be able to pay that invoice online, which is a great feature. People can pay your bills while you're sleeping. So you want to put in the appropriate terminology that will embed within the email and give them a link that will take them to the GoToBilling site and let them pay their invoice. Finally, you need to set up a directory on your computer where the PDF of the invoice or statement will be saved. Okay, once you've done that, your basic setup information is done and you can proceed to do an invoice for customer. We're going to do one to Imagine Time Inc. And I've already set up a progress bill. I'll show you what it is. Nothing fancy. It's a bill for a dollar. There it is. One dollar. Okay. And at the time that we go to post this invoice, okay, we have an opportunity. I'm going to change the subject of this. Your invoice and receipt is attached to the amount of carrot A. Thank you for your order. Carrot A will put the amount in the text of the email. And this will be the subject. And you see that the email address is automatically entered. If you've set up your client properly, uh, there's a field in the client screen on the left side called email invoice to, and you want to fill that in. All right, so at this point, I just click email invoices. Let's see what happens. Program goes through a little routine, and now with Outlook already being open, because Outlook needs to be open for this to work, okay, um, we would first get a screen that would give us an opportunity to make some editing changes. It's not going to display any graphics until you've sent your email. But you could append something to the text here. And then I click Send. Now when I've sent that, what actually appears in my Sent box is this. Your receipt is attached to the amount of $1. Thank you for your order. Uh, your invoice receipt. Now in your case, it would be your invoice for services rendered in the amount of $1,000 or $500, whatever you choose to charge. And the customer has got this PDF that is available for them to see. And I'm showing you just part of it right here. If there was an invoice balance, then this link would appear right here. And this link is going to take the customer to the GoToBilling website and let them pay their balance. So it takes them let me drag this over here. Takes them right there and lets them either set up an account or sign in with their credentials and pay their transaction balance. Once that happens, let me move this away now, you can go over to the Collections tab, Apply Hanging Payments, Import Online Payments, and you can select this date range any date range, but you know, preferably something recent. You will get a screen of transactions that can be imported directly into Imagine Time. So you would just check this OK to import, and then you click this import button down here, 
and the transactions come directly into man Imagine Time as payments. So you've saved the whole cashiering process. The customer pays the invoice or the statement online. You are notified of a payment. Uh, when you do get a payment online, go to billing is pretty good about sending notifications about that. So you would get an email from go to billing that there was a payment made by somebody. And then you would go into this import option. Again, I'm repeating myself. Apply hanging payments, import online payments. It takes you to this screen. You fill in the date range and then it creates or it displays what payments are available for import. Uh, if nothing displays on the screen, then there, is n there are no new imported transactions. Since some customers post-date the time for the payment, uh, you might get a notification, but they may enter the payment to be processed at the end of the month. So it may not appear on the screen until go to billing actually cashiers it. And if you're used to go to billing by now, you know that every uh, evening that you process any kind of ACH or credit card transaction, you get an email from them. So that would be your tip off to check it. The last step in integration is to allow you to process a credit card or ACH transaction from within the software, either with the customer present or by receiving the information over the telephone. Choose the collections ribbon, payment posting, and this screen comes up. We're going to select Imagine Time as the customer. And here's your date of the transaction. It's helpful to enter the type of credit card being processed. In all cases, you choose this preset CC online. Enter the payment amount. We're going to use a dollar for this example. And the card type. Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover, or in a uh, case of an ACH, checking account. So with the Visa, you're going to enter in the credit card number. And if it's not a valid number, it rejects it. So we're going to enter a valid number now. And enter your month and year. And the security code. A name, first and last, and a zip code are the recommended minimums. You don't have to enter the zip code, but it eliminates disputes and validates your information in the case there is a dispute with the client. Also, the email, if you've set up the client screen properly, the email is going to appear here automatically. At this point, you hit process charge. Okay, the process charge will send the email receipt to the customer and it will also credit your account which will be processed at the end of the day and that's all there is to it so that's how you affect it within imagine time uh, just to show you if you're doing checking different fields appear the bank account number routing ACH type and the account name so either way you fill in the appropriate information and you click the button, the action button, it will send out the receipt. It will also give you an opportunity to print a receipt. You can have the original with the credit card information on it and a duplicate which blanks out the critical information about the credit card. If you do save the original with the credit card information, you're required to keep that in a safe place under lock and key. We recommend that you only keep that for a couple weeks and then shred it. Okay, so that's the simple uh, overview of how Imagine Time integrates with GoToBilling. Um, again, uh, by letting you record payments within the program, sending a receipt to the customer, um, by billing from the program, and having the customer pay that directly, or by sending out client statements here. And also, uh, what you need to do initially to get this set up properly. And finally, uh, and maybe a little bit more obscurely, an example uh, where if the customer has a credit balance and you do send this click to pay online link, 
it's not going to display that link because the system knows that the customer doesn't owe any money. All right, so thank you very much for taking time to view this video.